Hello, everybody. Good evening. Rose here. Tonight, I'm reacting to quite a few things that I put together, uh, things from other people, uh, reacting to Foodie Beauty's community post talking about the hamsters. Also, I wanted to add along with that a video that the channel Marley Hendricks put together detailing Chantal and her previous care of animals along with other stuff on Twitter. I'm just putting it all together in a one react video because it all ties in together. So I'm sure everybody who watches Foodie Beauty, you're all aware of Hamstergate, Foodie going out and getting hamsters when she shouldn't have gotten the hamsters because she's in Kuwait. And what's gonna happen when she has to leave Kuwait in about a month? She's gonna have to leave the hamsters behind. There, there's really no reason for her to go out and get animals when she can't even take them home with her on the plane. So, you know what? Let's just get into everything because I think you'll find everything very interesting. And for anybody who is a fan of Chantal, that maybe you look at the reaction channels as haters. After watching this react video, I hope that you see our point of view. And why all of us who watch Chantal on the reaction side and maybe will understand more of why we're up in arms over Chantal having animals, especially getting new animals to put under her care because she truly does not have a good track record with taking care of animals or even herself. So let's see. Let's start with the community post. Let's start there. That's a good place to start. So Foodie posted this five hours ago saying YouTube Cribs, Hammy Edition, coming soon. Harry is passed out on a dried mango chunk. I think he loves his new hamster mansion. Also, like I said, as soon as I get home or very soon after my cats, also my pets, will be taken to the vet for a checkup and nail trimmings. Though for now, the nails are in good shape from what I can see in video chat. I'll be home in a month or less. Pizza's a good cat sitter because he's not a stranger to them. I know they miss me and I do feel bad. I know some cat, some dog owners personally who are amazing dog parents and treat their dogs like kids. And sometimes they even take their dogs to a sitter. At least mine get to stay home. Anyway, I am tired of explaining myself in regards to how I care for my pets. I think it's safe to say that Harry the hamster is very happy with his new mansion. Video update coming soon. He's my second biggest boy. Mary was returned to the shop, but a family was already looking while we were there and seemed interested. All I can do is hope the rest of the hamsters get a good home, but I was misinformed and impulsive and only should have gotten one. We chose Harry because he's much more friendly and I bonded with him. Look at that hamster tooth. So that was the entire post. And here's a picture of Harry the hamster. Now, before we get into the Twitter stuff or even the video that Chantal just dropped showing Harry the hamster in his new habitat, I've already got thoughts about this post. Okay, so let's start with her calling Harry's new enclosure, a mansion. Isn't that just reminiscent of how she was describing the place that she was gonna move into? She called it a mansion. She kept saying it was a mansion and she was embellishing it and making it seem extravagant. And then Pete's came along and pretty much just broke the news that it wasn't a mansion. It was just a standard, you know, two or three bedroom house, which was fine if you want to live in a two or three bedroom house. But with Chantal, everything has to be exaggerated. It's got to be bigger. It's got to be more. It's got to be flashier. She will talk up someone or something for more than what it actually is. And I took a peek at the video before doing this react. The enclosure it's better than the travel cage that she got for both the hamsters together, but it's certainly not a big enclosure. It's still too small. 
as I understand it, Syrian hamsters, they need a lot of room because they're used to being out in the wild. So what she had both hamsters in, it wasn't even a real cage. It was a travel cage. It's meant for traveling with the animal, but it's not a permanent enclosure. And the cage that she now has Harry in, it's a bit bigger and there's tunnels and everything, but it's still too small, Chantal. It's still too small. On top of that, Chantal, you're going to be going home in about a month. Are you really expecting Sala that after you're gone, that he's going to commit himself to taking care of Harry the hamster? Because I'm sorry, I just can't see it happening. I'm not saying he's a cruel person. I'm not saying he's an animal abuser. I don't know Sala that way. But hamsters, they are up at night. They are nocturnal. When Mary and Harry were in the exercise ball, which was too small in the travel cage, Sala kept getting irritated just for them using the exercise wheel. Sorry, exercise wheel. So how is he going to deal with Harry the hamster using the exercise wheel at night when he's trying to sleep? On top of that, hamsters can be a bit messy, okay? And you've got to commit yourself to cleaning out their bedding two or three times a week, depending on how messy things get. So is he going to commit himself to making sure the hamster cage is clean? Because you do have to keep it clean. You just have to. Uh, so you know what, Chantal, if you're going to be home in about a month, you shouldn't be getting any new pets, especially if you can't take them home with you. Getting a pet and then leaving them behind for someone else to take care of, that's just irresponsible. I know you're lonely over there in Kuwait, but that's not how you deal with your loneliness, ma'am. That is not how you deal with it. Oh, so she goes on. She's talking about Pete's being a good cat sitter. I could argue that point to the death. I don't think he's a good cat sitter. I think he's looking after the cats, but he's certainly not someone that he takes top of the line care of the cats. We know this from past experience with Pete's. He left the cat litter unchanged for three months. He dumped new cat litter on top of old cat litter and then was complaining that he couldn't change the cat litter because it was too heavy. Although Pete's, Leaning close now, Pete's. I'm a woman and I'm about 130 pounds. I'm petite. And when I lived in my house in Long Beach, I had to change litter box this way. I had to take the litter box. I had to carry it down two flights of stairs, dump it into the dumpster and then walk back in the house. So you over there complaining about the litter box is too heavy. Well, it wouldn't be too heavy if you change the litter the way it's supposed to be changed and not just sit there and dump new litter on top of old litter to where the box is heavy. And even if it is, do take little bits out, bag it up, throw it away and keep doing that till the whole thing's empty. Anyway, so she goes on to say that, uh, talking about dog parents and they take their cat dogs to a sitter. Nothing wrong with that. But in a way, she's throwing shade, saying, at least mine get to stay home. Well, here's the thing, Chantal. Your home isn't exactly the nicest, cleanest environment for those cats. There's garbage everywhere. We've seen cat food on the floor. We've seen cat poo on the floor. We remember that moment in your bedroom where there's, there was cat food everywhere it looked a mess. There's mummified food. There's fast food containers. Not exactly the nicest environment for a cat. Okay. So if somebody out there is a dog person and they need a dog sitter or they take their dogs to say a boarding house, they're still getting the proper care versus your cats at home that don't get properly taken care of. Uh, let's see. So she's talking about Harry the hamster happy with his new mansion. It's not a mansion. It's just a bigger cage. Uh, let's go on to this part here 
where she's saying that she took Mary back. Of course she did. Of course, out of the two hamsters, she's going to take the female back. Because for some reason, Chantal hates anything female, even animals. She hates other female humans. But if it's an animal and it happens to be female, for some reason, she's got a hatred of anything female. So she had a choice to keep one hamster or the other. Of course, she kept the male. Of course, she did. Of course, she kept the male hamster that was a little bit big and a little bit fluffy. Isn't that kind of a coincidence that her cat, Sam, is a big, fluffy male? So is she trying to use Harry the hamster as kind of a fill-in for Sam since Sam is not there? Because she immediately took Mary back. How to take back the female, get rid of the female, let's keep the male hamster. Now, this nonsense that she's talking about, they returned the hamster to the pet store, and as soon as they walked in, somebody was interested. I seriously doubt that happened. I just can't see them walking in the pet store with Mary, and as soon as they walk in, somebody's interested in buying her. I mean, there's a lot of hamsters in the store, why would somebody who's looking for a hamster look at somebody walking in with a hamster that they're returning and go, oh, she's cute. I want her. That doesn't even make sense. That doesn't even make sense. I really hope that Mary did get returned to the pet store or she was given to someone that will take care of her. Uh, Chantal took Mary back. What she should have done is take both of them back. But Let's be honest, Chantal got the hamsters on purpose to get everybody talking, to have content. She's always saying she needs content and she can't use her own cats right now for content. She can't use them for deflection. And Chantal knows that animal care and people that are pet lovers, she knew that her getting the hamsters would activate that hot button in everybody where they would get mad at her. And that's exactly what she wanted. She's been looking around YouTube and she's been noticing that a lot of the reaction channels, we are branching out. We're looking at different people to react to. We are reacting to different people. We're doing gaming content. We're covering different channels. We're branching out with our stuff. And Chantal does not like that. Although she says to us all the time, we're a bunch of vultures and content thieves and she doesn't like us reacting to her at the same time, if we react to somebody different, she flips out. She wants the attention on her. She wants a spotlight on her. And what better way to get that than to do something that's going to absolutely tick everybody off and get them upset. Chantal also has in her history, she likes for people to be concerned about her and concerned about her pets. Because if they're concerned about her and if they're concerned about her pets, they will tune in. They will give her a view. There's a lot of people that go in Chantal's chat and watch Chantal just because they care about BBJ and Sam. They're concerned about their care. And Chantal is not the best pet owner. So now that she's got Harry the hamster, a lot of people might be tuning in to make sure he's okay because she is a neglectful pet owner. So she wants a spotlight on her. She knows that by having an animal in her care, it's going to make a lot of people worry. They're going to tune in to make sure that that animal is okay. And she's fine with that. She's fine with exploiting an animal for views. And here's the proof of that. Let me just pull this up right here. Okay. All right. So this is from Mrs. Robinson. Mrs. Robinson on Twitter says, you just admitted using innocent animals that have no willpower for content that you can't care for properly and will leave to die. You bought them for content for outrage because you thrive on negative attention. It's all for money. No regards to a living soul. You're a vile, rotten POS. So here's a comment that Chantal made saying, so 
Using animals for content is disgusting as some morons claim, but using the same person every day for content isn't LMAO. So she just admitted right there, she's using the animals for content. This is my opinion, y'all. I think Chantal, she's been struggling to find content ideas that will get her a lot of money, get her a lot of views. She ran out of ideas a while ago, the whole Natter arc. She ran as far as she could with that. So now she's just been scrambling, trying to find something that will keep people tuned in. Her views have been down. Her subs have been dropping off. A lot of people are going to the reaction channels. So she needs something to get people interested. So what is a hot button more so than animals? Especially with her because she sucks at taking care of animals. She's a bad pet owner and everybody knows it. And she's capitalizing on the fact that people, again, like I said, worry and are concerned for the animals. But here's her admitting that she bought the hamsters just for content. Just like she admitted in a live stream the reason why she's wearing a hijab and an abaya was because she needs content. She actually came out and said that. This woman is not above nor below using anything for content. If it means another week or another month of making money, she's all about that life. So she outright admitted the reason why she got the hamsters was not because she needed something to love, not because she was lonely, but because she needs content. She's always in need of content and she just can't be bothered to find some original idea that has nothing to do with exploiting a living thing. Okay, this is an interesting clip posted from Hidden Truths, Booty Beauty. She asked Sala why he needed sleep because she missed him already. That comment speaks volumes. It says he's not staying there with her and she's alone again. That is why he bought her two hamsters to keep her company, theory. So let's play the clip from Hidden Truths. <laughs> hamsters die, okay, fish. Are you grumpy? Sala, <laughs> why do you need sleep? I miss you already. I'm calling Johnny. Now there's a reason why I'm playing this clip. I want to bring up something that happened quite a while ago. Anybody's been watching Foodie since literally the very beginning of her channel. Y'all will remember that she was with a gentleman by the name of Bibi Malin. I remember hearing about Chantal and Bibi that she was in so in need of attention that there was one particular occasion where he was just ironing his shirts for work and Foodie threw a temper tantrum just because she wasn't getting attention at that moment. So here's Foodie, this is, this is years later and she's with Sala or hanging around Sala in this fake sham marriage. And Sala just wants to sleep and she's griping because he needs his sleep. Her problem with needing attention is so large. It's so out of control that she's just like, why do you have to sleep? Because people get tired, foodie. Because people get tired and they can't be up 24 hours a day to make sure you get attention. So do I think Sala agreed to get the hamsters just because she needs attention. She needs something to put her focus on. He can't be there all the time or he doesn't want to be there all the time. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think Sala is treating Foodie very much like a child. Like I've been watching all her vlogs and notice everything that Sala has done with Foodie it's all something reminiscent that you would do with a child. Like taking her to the zoos, taking her to the museums, getting her fast food, and now getting her a hamster. Uh, no shade on anyone who has a hammy. They are cute pets. But getting a hamster, it, 
Hamsters are generally things that you get young children as their first pet. And Foodie has, even though she's 38 years old, her, her brain, her mentality hasn't caught up to the age of her body. She acts like a much younger person. You know, she throws temper tantrums like a toddler. You know, like she's very immature in her thinking. But there's Sala over there. And he, even though he's younger physically than Foodie, you know, like she's over there throwing temper tantrums if she doesn't get whatever food she wants, if she doesn't get to spend time with him. So do I think that the hamsters were got for her, either by her or by him, just so she would have something to distract herself so that he can go out and do his thing or get some sleep? Yeah, I, I think that happened. I really think that happened. Like she, she's alone. I feel she's been, she is alone at that apartment a lot. And he's off doing his thing and she gets lonely and maybe she's been complaining and she's like, I need something to, to love on. She, she needs affection and he's not giving it to her. And so he's like, here, have some hamsters and shut up. <laughs> All right. So what else do we have here? Oh, I messed up. That's okay. That's okay. All right. So I read the community post. Now I want to show you guys a very interesting video put together by the channel Marley Hendricks. And you know what, Marley? This, this was a really great video. Really great job putting this stuff together. I'm going to leave a link for the video in the description for those who want to check out Marley Hendricks. And I certainly do encourage that but this video is called uh sala bought foodie beauty hamsters let's take a look at chantal's pet care and this is really well detailed about her history with animals and her talking about animals in her past including the fact that she's had hamsters before and she talks about some of the animals in her past and how they've mysteriously died so let's watch the video together so there's the original trip to the pet store to get Harry and Mary. And they originally got put in that ridiculously small, cheap travel cage. So at first we didn't know that same sex hamsters will fight quite a bit and sometimes even to the death. And you know what? I, before we even get started with this, I think that her getting the hamsters, it wasn't just her needing something to focus her energy and her time with. I think Chantal is very lonely over there. And she was projecting what she wanted with Sala onto the hamsters. Like she's getting this male and female hamster and the way she talks about them as, as if they're human people like, Oh, look, they're in love and I don't want them to be lonely. I think she was talking more about herself when she was saying that like she's lonely and she wants a companion. And if you take a step back and you look at everything, I think as weird as it may sound, I think the situation with the hamsters was the situation she wants with Sala. You know, like she wants a mate. She wants to be in love. She wants to have a companion and she wants to trap Sala with her in a freaking cage to where he can't escape. Honestly, because that's Chantal's thinking. She's not about finding a man that honestly loves her, that wants to be with her. She's always been about trapping a man with her to where he can't get away. So, you know, the similarities, her wanting hamsters, like two animals trapped in a cage together. Oh, they're so in love. You know, like, I just don't want them to be lonely. No, you don't want yourself to be lonely. You don't want yourself to be lonely. You are lonely because you chose to go to Kuwait and you chased D to another side of the world and it's D you can't even touch, but you didn't want yourself to be lonely. You're projecting your loneliness 
onto these animals. So we got a male and female. It is possible that they will have babies in the future, but they will be well cared for and given to homes. Oh, really? So you're bringing home a male and female hamster. Do you have homes set up for them already? No. You putting a male and female hamster in a cage is irresponsible as hell because that female was probably pregnant that night, that very night, foodie. And female hamsters can have between five and 15 babies all at once. And I know I've said this in another video, I don't like to repeat myself, but that little tiny cage, the female, if she did give birth, she would have killed her own young just out of stress because essentially, what you're doing by putting two hamsters in that small a cage and a male and a female, you're forcing the female to breed. If she can't get away from the male, she's trapped there with him. And if he wants to do something and she wants to do something, what do you think is going to happen? Okay. Uh, hamsters are not social creatures and adults must be kept alone in their cages. The possibility of accidental breeding is thus eliminated. And you must carefully and purposely choreograph the introduction of intended males, right? Like you don't want them to get pregnant. You got to keep them separated. They can live together either two of the same sex as a pair and sometimes in same sex groups, same sex pairs can fall out. So it is important to keep an eye out for signs of bullying and have the possibility of separating them if need be. Their coats come in a wide range of colors. It can also be satin covered. So this looks like Harry. This looks like the, the hamster Harry. Let's see. Male or female? Latino is going to fight. No, no, no. Okay. The gray, male. The brown, female. The male, the female. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, y'all, for those that are on my channel, I completely encourage everybody to go check out the live stream that Gary Unfiltered did last night. Because myself and members of the Unfiltered Squad, we sat up for two hours or so on Discord going through Foodie's videos, putting everything together. And then Gary did his live stream and he put it all out there foodies had these hamsters for over a week over a week she didn't foodie she likes to throw off the reaction channels her being in kuwait what she's been doing is she'll go out and film a whole bunch of footage but she won't post it the day that she films it she'll sit on it and then she'll post things in pieces to keep everybody confused with the timeline because she knows the reaction channels. If we're about anything, we're all about detail because the devil is in the details. So if she's lying and she's hiding things, she's trying to hide the details to where we stay confused. But we sat up on Discord last night for two hours noticing different things putting different things together and then gary did his live stream and foodies had those hamsters for over a week over a week they've been in that little bitty cage for over a week and she just deliberately decided to hide that y'all saw the apartment reveal Y'all remember those square marks on the couch remember me remarking about them i thought isn't that odd what are those square marks on the couch? I thought it was a CPAP machine. No, that was where the hamster cage was. And then remember how she went into the bedroom and she only showed a corner? That's because the other corner, that's where the hamster cage was. So she's had those hamsters for over a week and she just sat on it because she knew what would happen if she showed the hamster cage. She knew and she deliberately waited. And so those hamsters stayed in that tiny little cage for over a week. Thank you for buying me. You're welcome, baby. Hamster bees. <laughs> Hi. 
No, no, no. They're gonna love each other. <laughs> Hamster bees. <laughs> Welcome to our family. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Hi. I think he uh, feels thirsty. Yeah, we'll get him some water when we get home. Chantal has noted that she will get upgraded living space eventually. Why not immediately? That's what I said. They're right there at the pet store. They could have gotten any size enclosure that they wanted. They were right there. But instead, Chantal and Sala, they cheaped out. Let's just call it for what it is. They cheaped out. They got the smallest cage they could get. And it's not even like a real enclosure. It was a travel cage. But Miss making $10,000 a month on YouTube, she got the smallest cage she could get. Her and Sala cheaped out. And you know what, Chantal? If you have hamsters, they need a big enough enclosure to where they can tunnel they can run around. They can feel comfortable. You were at the pet store. You got two hamsters and you cheaped out. You absolutely cheaped out. I've seen shoe boxes that were bigger than this cage. Oh, and look at the way she's talking about the hamster saying, Oh, is this my new boyfriend? No. It's two hamsters, two wild animals. It's not about boyfriend and girlfriend. See, she's projecting onto these animals because that's what she wants with Sala. She wants him to be her actual boyfriend. She wants to be in love. And I'm, I'm, I said this before, I'll say it again. Chantal, when it comes to the men in her life, she likes to put them in a position where they can't escape. She likes to create connecting points. Y'all remember her saying about Natter, I just have to get into his house. Part of the reason why she had to get into Natter's house or anybody's house is so she can leave her stuff there, leave something there to where she's always bothering that person. Example, when she lived with Bibi, she left her stuff there for over a year just so she could always call BB whenever she wanted to have something to talk about. Sala is in another country. The moment she puts her stuff in a suitcase and she goes home, there's going to be nothing of hers there. He's got no reason to pick up the phone and talk to Chantal. So since she's going to put her stuff in a suitcase, let's just buy a pet together. So I'll always have a reason to call you on the phone and bug you. So even though it's a paid arrangement, it's a fake marriage, she still wants to stay in touch with Sala. Well, guess what, Chantal? I promise you, I promise you, the moment your butt walks out that door and you get on that plane, he's gonna give that hamster away. Because since you're there on a tourist visa, you've been there for three months, it's gonna be at least three months before you can go back. So do you think Saul is going to take care of a hamster for three months while you're gone? I don't think so. The moment your butt gets on that plane, he's going to get the hamster away because he's got things to do. Uh, oops. Uh, female hamsters are intensely territorial and will attack any males that approach them at other times. They are larger and more aggressive than male hamsters. And if a mismatched pair is allowed to fight it out to the end, the female almost always wins. So, you know, if, if the hamsters don't get along, they're going to fight to the death. And the female is going to be the one that might win the fight. And you know, what makes the problem worse, if you put two animals, two hammies, in too small of a space, they're going to go stir crazy and they're going to fight anyway. They're going to go at, they're going to go at each other because there's not enough space. See, there, there's her projecting again on the hamsters, oh, the, the hearts. Chantal, the, the hamsters just met. They're not in love. No, that's what you want with Sala. You want to be in love. You're projecting on them. 
Beautifully. The wheel is so small, it's probably intended for a robo hamster. I'm of the opinion that that wheel is meant for mice. It's meant for mice. It's not meant for a hamster because uh, it looks like Mary's on the wheel. She can barely stay on it because she's too big. Hi. <laughs> oh my God, cute. <laughs> she has no room to run around in. I think they start to love each other. I think so. He, he looks like he's making a nice comfortable spot for her. Is paper or pine bedding better for hamsters? Do not confuse aspen bedding with pine or cedar, as pine and cedar are both extremely toxic for your hamster. A safe bedding choice that provides good odor control. Aspen bedding should not take up more than half of the entire habitat. Use paper-based bedding for the rest of the space. Well, that didn't look like aspen bedding. That looked like cedar. Although I can't be sure without actually being there and looking at it. But Chantal doesn't care that much to research what she's putting in a cage, if it's safe, if it's good for the animal. It's just everything that I saw of the cage enclosure, A, it's a travel cage. B, it's too small. C, the wheel is too small. It looked like she went as cheap as she could with every single thing connected to that cage. Even down to getting like the cheapest food for the hamsters. He's a real gentleman, just like you. And there's nowhere for those poor hammies to tunnel or burrow, which they like to do. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> He's making a home. Yeah. Hey, guys, hungry. Hmm? Yeah. Now he's looking for a place to... Harry, the hamster, is looking for a place to burrow, and there's nowhere to burrow. There, there's nothing to burrow himself in. Look, look at that cheap food. I'm hungry. <laughs> I think they're hungry. And I see that something else that's bothering me about her having the hamsters. So Chantal's doing the same thing with Harry the hamster that she does with her cats at home, just throwing food at them constantly. Food, food, food. So she's got a problem with food. She's a binge eater. We all know this. We've talked about it. She's a binge eater. For her, I don't know, maybe growing up, she associates food with love. So she's got this hamster and she's probably going to feed it until it's, it's obese. Hamsters are not meant to be obese. But she's going to feed it and feed it and feed it because that's, that's how she lives her life. Like eating, eating, eating. It's not healthy for you, Chantal, and it's certainly not healthy for a hamster. If you want to show an animal love, show it love, but don't sit there and feed, feed, feed the animal until it becomes obese and it can't even move. <laughs> okay, the male is eating, the female is playing. I also find it interesting that when it comes to the animals in her life that she keeps around her, the male animals, she wants them the same way. She wants them big and fluffy and fat and obese like her. But when it comes to the human male counterparts, she wants them the exact opposite. Isn't that interesting? She wants her, and if the pets that she keeps around her that she gives the most love to are male and she wants them to be obese like she is but when it comes to a human partner she wants the exact opposite <laughs> she's like food he take the whole food okay. look at this <laughs> check it out hello just give her a chance to eat she go back to play Guys, we named our hamsters Harry and Mary Samsonite from our favorite movie. You guys know. Don't roll your eyes, it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Harry. Mary. <laughs> Harry. Yeah, I'm going to get past this part because I've already reacted to it. But let's see. Let's go here. There's some lettuce and some apples and some carrots because they'll find that really tasty. 
Did you tire yourself out, Mary? This is for her. While I'm gone, I'm going to be gone for. Okay, hold on. She's talking about Bibi Jane now. This is the part that I really wanted to get to. So let's back it up here. Supplement with fresh fruits and vegetables. Hi, Harry. <laughs> so I'm trying to find the same for her while I'm gone. I'm going to be gone for three months. Do you think she's going to be happy with Pete? So he's not going to give her the same affection. That Ooh, she's talking real fast. Let me slow that down. Let me slow that down a bit. Sorry about that. It's just she's talking so fast you can hardly understand what she's saying. Let's slow that down a little bit because I want to catch all of that. Supplement with fresh fruits and vegetables. Hi, Harry. <laughs> so I'm trying to find the same for her while I'm gone. I'm going to be gone for three months. Do you think she's going to be happy with Pete? He's not going to give her the same affection that I did. So I need somebody who will. But if, if I take her to the vet and the vet says she's 20, like I come home. I'm going to bring them to the vet before I go. Obviously, they're going to get everything done. I just. But you didn't. You didn't, though. You you went to Kuwait. And your cats, they. All it would have taken. To fix them up a little bit. Make two phone calls, Chantal. One to the mobile groomers to have them groomed and cleaned. Another one to a mobile vet. Mobile vets can't do everything, but they can do a lot. BBJ, she's been in need of oral surgery for months, for like almost a year. You've known this for a long, long time, and there's really no excuse why you never took her back, except for the fact that you didn't want to spend all kinds of money on dental surgery, even though you spend an equal amount of money, if not more, on the green products and food. You had the money, you just didn't want to spend it on her. You wanted to spend it on yourself, you selfish bee. But you've known for a long time that BBJ needs surgery and you didn't take care of that. And you went to Kuwait and she's still suffering. She's still suffering. And you wonder why everybody that watches you, that are viewers, that are reactors, why we don't like the idea of you getting another pet when you've got two at home that you are neglecting. And you have been a neglectful owner, ma'am, whether you like to admit it or not. Just want to um, get everything checked out, make sure their shots are up to date, which they're not, but they will be. Um, so people can stop free. So the shots aren't even up to date. You know, that. I have their whole life. Like, this is new for me. I never get them vaccinated, ever. Call me. So casual about not vaccinating her pets, and she wants to be a parent, let that sink in. Yeah, because she looks at vaccinations and taking her pets to the vet spending money on her pets, making sure they have the proper supplies. It's, it's an inconvenience to her. It's bothersome. Isn't that something, y'all? She has no problem spending money on some strange dude thousands of miles away. She has no problem going through everything she's got to go through to get on a plane and go to Kuwait and spend time with Sala or even with Natter. Look at everything she did for Natter, driving back and forth to Montreal over and over again, spending hours on the road for Natter. But she can't be bothered to take her cat to the vet because that's not fun. That's not fun to do that. She's always looking for things. If it's fun and it's enjoyable and she gets something out of it, she'll do it. But if it's not about her and it's a little bit bothersome, if it's a little bit inconvenient and if it costs her money, she wants nothing to do with it. Call me by cat on right Also, another thing I just want to say, it's a nun. It does kind of look it. <laughs> so I said, well, I mean, um, I was like terrified, like running around hiding, trying to find somewhere to hide. <laughs> and <laughs> I feel so bad for it. And I'm like, mom, what? What is wrong with the gerbil? She's like, well, I felt bad for it, cutie. It got attacked by other gerbils in the cage or whatever. I don't, I don't remember who attacked it. It was like other, another gerbil or something. It got half its tail bitten off. <laughs> it looked like somebody tried to feed it to a snake, but the snake was like, meh, halfway through eating it, you know? <laughs> you don't taste good. I'm going to spit you out. Poor thing! Anyways, the next day it croaked. Look at the way she talks about the, the pet. Oh, next day it croaked. 
And she's talked the same way about BBJ. Oh, like if she needs medications, then she could just take a dirt nap. She's so callous when it comes to talking about pets. Like, oh, no big deal. It's just an animal. You know, it was half dead. Um, then another birthday, I got Chip. And Chip was a crabby, crabby hamster. Like, I think it was like a teddy bear hamster. Look like that lady I work with, just like, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sorry, I have eyes. Yeah, but it was always like, and like that little face where it's scrunched up and grumpy. So in the box, he was so cute, you know. I'm like, oh my god, he's so cute. <laughs> my mom went to pick him up. <clears throat> he bit her finger. So she, <laughs> she lifts her hand out of the box. He's attached to her finger, and she's like, ow, 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 <laughs> wiggling it. He was like holding on. Anyway, he was nice to look at, I guess. Pets are an accessory to her according to her story time and actions. Pets have always been an accessory. They've always been props to her. Just something to be used for content. Like y'all remember back in the beginning of her channel, she used to care more about her cats. And then Natter happened. Then the drugs happened. Then suddenly she just couldn't be bothered. They, they were bothersome to her. But instead of giving the pets to somebody that had the time and the energy and the thought and the love to take care of them, she'd rather hang on to them and use them as props, use them as accessories, treating them like, say, an old purse or a pair of shoes. Like, you don't want it anymore, but you're not going to let go of it like you should. But anything and everything is fodder for content and topics of conversation and used for deflection. But every time I tap on the glass and go, Chip, hi Chip. I have a weird voice for all my animals. He would look at me like, like, like. So she expects that every animal that she gets right off the bat, it better be affectionate to her. And if it's not, then she's gonna reject it. Chantal, some animals, they're not affectionate right off the bat, especially if they don't know you. Whether it's a cat or a dog, you got to build trust with it. You got to, you know, loving care, all of that. And hamsters generally are not like cats. You know, they, they can be loving, but it takes time to build their trust and then to get used to you and your smell. But you're expecting every animal that comes near you to be super affectionate. And that's not the case for some. Seriously, I'm going to kill you. She got me a guinea pig, but one time, that's how I found out I was allergic. The thing would not shut up. It would not shut up. And guinea pigs squeal all night. And I'd be like, Mom, I can't sleep. Anyways, no more rodents for me. So, another animal. She got me. Mm. Well, it just seems like Chantal's family, they, they gave her, they, she, some, she would get a pet something would happen to the pet and mom would go out and buy her another one and then something would happen to that one it just seems to be a history here of chantal not taking very good care of her pets because she's not telling stories here if i had this pet for 10 15 years and it died of natural causes something always seems to happen to a pet in her care so anybody out there who's a chantal fan who's a foodie beauty fan and maybe you don't like the reaction channels. Can you understand now why Chantal having a pet makes people nervous? Why it gets them concerned? Because she's not a good person. She's not an animal lover. She's not a good cat mama. She is someone that she takes on another living thing and she doesn't take care of it. She just treats it like an old piece of furniture, like. I, I got it, and it, when, as long as I'm fascinated by it, I'm fascinated by it, but the moment I lose interest, I'm going to neglect it. You can't do that with animals. Hmm. By the way, Chip ended up dying. Every time I, I would go away... Listen to Chantal explain she would leave another person in charge of her pets while away. Sound familiar? Yeah, it does. So she'll get the pets, and then she'll pawn it off on someone to take care of because she'll have... You'll be interested for five minutes and then, oh, it's somebody else's problem. So she's doing that with her cats and now she's with Sala 
They got a, Harry the hamster. Who do you think is going to take care of Harry when she leaves? Because she can't take it home. We got a family trip. I don't have this one friend watching my animals. Every time I got back, the animal would be dead. Oh, really? So you leave the animal with somebody and you, and you come back and it's deceased? So why were you leaving your pets with people like this? She swears she didn't do it on purpose, you know. She was like younger. Her mom would bring her over to watch my animals. I think, I used to think anyway, she was trying to get revenge on me because she's the friend that I went to her birthday party, bought her the dangerous mind. I think you blame the death on her, in my opinion. Yeah, Chantal, sometimes when she speaks, when she talks about another person, I get the sense that it's something that she did. She's just trying to shift the blame on somebody else. Like she talks in reverse. And soundtrack, you know, the one that has the been spending most of our lives living in a gangster's paradise. Well, she was being a bee and wouldn't let me play with the Barbie that I wanted to play with. And she was being selfish. So I took the tape back and went home. So she was crying about that. Then also, she came over one day. She was looking out the window and went to like retract and hit her head. I don't think she hit it very hard, but she started crying like, like not even a one year old would cry this hard. She was crying so loud and like screaming. So you're basically admitting here that you're a bully. But it doesn't sound like she bumped her head. It sounds like you hit her. So I told her to shut up <laughs> and to suck it up. No, I was, that was mean. Okay. But uh, I think that, you know, ever since then, she's had it out for me and she kills my best. <laughs> I don't know. According to you, Chantal, everybody's got it out for you. Let me just clue you into something you haven't gotten yet. Lean in. Feel free to lean in. Everybody's your enemy, right? Here's a news flash. You are your own worst enemy. If anybody is stopping you for being what you want to be, what you want to do, it's you. You're your own worst enemy. You hurt yourself far more than anybody else could ever hurt you. You get in your own way. You're a big old bully. You always have been. And from the sounds of this video, you're not a good person. Because you just said in this video, every single pet you've ever had, they suffer a mysterious death. It doesn't sound like you got a history of having pets that they live to old age. Everything that you bring near you that's living ends up dead or sick. You've got cats at home that are in bad health. And you think the best thing to do is to go out and get a hamster that you're gonna turn around and abandon in about a month? You're trash. I, I, I really, I doubt it, but. Oh, here we go. Funny how she accused FFG for her pet's death. When Chantal's pets constantly died. Are you projecting Chantal? Yeah, I think she is. I think so. A part of me wondered, you know? Before you think I'm too weird, I better move on with the story. So Chip died. I went to, uh... Oh, no. Yeah, if somebody like Chantal, they got a history of having multiple pets. And they're all mysteriously dying. Chantal, you have no reason to talk about FFG. She loved her dogs. She did everything she could for her dogs. Okay? No one could ever accuse Frenchie of being neglectful of her pets. But you, on the other hand, you... You neglectful. I went on a family vacation to get an walkway on my grandpa's boat. Came back, Chip was dead. He was in a ball. I thought he was still alive. He even died with a grumpy face. Anyway, I pulled out one of his whiskers and put it. Oh, she's, she said right here, she's had a hamster before and it ended up dead. <laughs> and y'all wonder over there why we don't like the idea of Chantal having pets. We're not haters. We're not haters. We just don't like somebody who's a neglectful person who can't even take care of herself, taking something into her care that's going to rely on her when she is unreliable. If she were a reliable person 
And if she had a good history of taking care of pets, it wouldn't make us nervous. It wouldn't make us worry. But we're worried. We're concerned for any living thing she takes into her care. And Chantal, if you can't take care of a pet, what would you do with a human child? Because trust me, they're a lot more high maintenance. If you can't handle a cat, if you can't handle a hamster, how can you handle a human child? You, you, you couldn't. You absolutely couldn't. You would, you would go mad. You wouldn't have the patience. Children require love and care and guidance and patience. And you don't have it. You're a very impatient person, ma'am. Very impatient. In like a little jar. But his whiskers were like clear, so I could never see the whisker. And I buried him in the backyard. <laughs> so my mom bought me an iguana, not an iguana, like a little newt. You know what, Mama Sorrel? This is the problem. Your daughter growing up, like whatever pet you bought her, they never lasted. But what did you do? You kept buying her more. Morons. Morons. Why would you do that? If you have your daughter and you know she's irresponsible, why would you buy her a pet to shut her up? Because she was throwing temper tantrums? Hello. You don't reward bad behavior. You don't reward irresponsible behavior. If you have a child that they can't keep a pet alive, the answer is not to go out and get them more pets so that they die in their care. What is wrong with people? And I so that is a video from Marley Hendricks. And I'm going to leave a link for the video in the description. And I encourage everybody to check it out and check out Marley Hendricks. So here's the newest video from Chantal called Harry the Hamster's Mansion Tour. Yeah, so we're calling the cage a mansion. What is it with you embellishing things, Chantal? The old place that you were living in, it was supposed to be a mansion. And this slightly bigger cage is a mansion? No, ma'am. It's not that big. I've gone on Twitter. I've seen hamster enclosures that were huge, huge. This is not a mansion. This is just a slightly bigger enclosure compared to the travel cage. It's all this is. So here's like the new enclosure and I'm turning off the music. So yeah, they've got some travel tunnels and stuff for Harry the hamster. It still looks too small for him. It's better than what the travel cage was, but it, it still looks cramped. It looks cramped to me. Am I wrong? It looks cramped. It, look, it looks like there's a whole bunch of stuff crammed in there. It, it looks uncomfortable. It does. He's got places to run around in, but one of the things that's bothering me, hold on a minute, let's see if we can zoom in on it. You see those little plastic tunnels that she's got in there? Why am I worried that he's going to get stuck? I don't know if he's a full-size hamster, if he's still growing, but they look kind of small, like he could easily get stuck in the tunnels, especially if she overfeeds him. So I'll speak for him. Hi. <laughs> we have a wheel, a big wheel for a big boy. Bunch of shavings. This is the first floor. Some bedding. A, a nice chew toy. We have some stairs. That chew toy does not look big enough. It looks like he can gnaw that away in about a day. There's here. He likes to use often. Oh, oh, he's going to go in the tunnel. Oh, not yet. Mission failed. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. We have to give it time, I guess. And the water bottle. I think you want to discover the place first. Yes, his new territory. Mm. All for yourself, buddy. A nice piece of mango papaya. It just looks cramped. I mean, I'm glad there's stuff in there, but it looks cramped. There's like there's too much stuff in there. A chunk. Some food. Mm -hmm. oh, nice, my nice, oh, nice. my gosh. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Finally. He did it. <laughs> go, go, go. How is he going to get up there? Can he? Yeah, yeah, he can. Yeah, he can. <laughs> Harry. You know, this is so sad to me. I never thought that I would see the day 
that Chantal would be exploiting a hamster for content. I mean, we've seen some pretty outrageous stuff with Chantal. I've seen her exploit deviant essay for money and for profit and for views and her relationship with a crackhead and her own ED, but never in my life did I think that Chantal would stoop so low as to buy a hamster and use that to make money. But she did it. She absolutely did it. She got two hamsters. And then once she got backlash for Mary, Mary suddenly disappeared. And she's claiming that she took Mary back to the pet store. I'm not so sure about that. But they got this bigger enclosure now. And it just seems like it's not Chantal that's the content now. It's Harry. So are we going to have a hamster channel, Chantal? Is that going to be the new foodie beauty couples vlog channel content? Maybe because you figured out that you and Sala going out and eating at a Burger King is not going to set the world on fire. Let's exploit this poor hamster for another 30 days until you go home to Kuwait. Disgusting. Go, buddy. I think he has to go from the bottom. Let's see if he does it. <laughs> I think he needs to practice. <laughs> hey, cutie. <laughs> Why you hide in the corner? Yeah, come, come, yes. Hello. <laughs> go in, go in, please. Yeah, I mean, the poor hamster just running around the enclosure, just checking everything out because allegedly they just got the new enclosure. And what are they, what are they expecting the hamster to do? Like do tricks for content? Oh, do this and do this. They're trying to direct the hamster to do things for interesting content. Chantal, you want interesting content? Go out and make it yourself. Don't rely on the hamster to do all the entertaining for you. Don't be so lazy that you're relying on the hamster to be entertaining because you don't know how to be? You want to tell? You are the best hamster. Do it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, bro. That is, this is so sad. Chantal has her main channel. Her and Sala have the couple's channel, which that's another thing. They got a couple's channel. How are they going to do couple content if she's back home in Canada? He's not even going to be there in Canada, so the couple's channel is kind of going to die the moment that she goes home. But the two of them are there together. But where's the camera? It's pointed at Harry the hamster. That's going to be the new entertainment. Oh. And for the record, the hamster's cute. I have nothing against hamsters. I have nothing against Harry the hamster. I've got everything against exploiting this poor animal because Chantal is too freaking lazy to be entertaining herself. Exploiting the animal for content and to make money. I got a problem with that. Maybe want some water. And then, so we have this tunneling system that goes upstairs. He can choose to use the tunnel if he so chooses, or he can go into the stairs. And here is his little house. This is where the magic happens. What magic? Solitary action. <laughs> That's odd she said that. This is where all the magic happens. But I thought you got rid of Mary. Usually when people say that, they mean an intimate moment. How is Harry the hamster going to be intimate by himself unless you have Mary there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, look, Harry is having trouble getting up that tunnel. And can you imagine the way that Chantal is going to be feeding that hamster? It's going to, it's going to get fat. It's going to become obese and it might get stuck. Oh yeah, yeah, you can do it. Come on. Go, go. Aaron Teach is going to overfeed that hamster and it's going to put on some pounds because, you know, like if, if she's going to overeat, then so does her pet. <laughs> you can do Unless it's a female, then she won't feed it at all. Do it. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, Harry. Oh my God. Whoa. Come on. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Oh, good boy. <laughs> good job. Good boy. Whoa. They like to burrow. 
Go ahead. You can do it. This doesn't even look like a real hamster enclosure. It just looks like a bird cage filled with stuff. I'm bothered by that. Keep moving. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> go, buddy. Go, 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 go. He's like, what's down here? <laughs> Are you stuck or what? Don't panic. <laughs> Keep moving. That does scare me that the hamster will get stuck in there and die. We got your back. <laughs> We're thinking of doing a hamster cam. Would you guys want to see that? Oh, so that's what's up. Is, is that going to be the new content? Oh, let's set up a hamster cam. We'll just point the camera at the hamster and people can tune in. Because there are channels on YouTube that it's like a cat cam or kitten cam where they have a camera pointed at an enclosure with uh, baby kittens or cats, and people do tune in to watch those. Is that your no idea for content, Chantal? Is that what you're trying to do? Because you wanted to go over to TikTok, but then you figured out, what are you going to do on TikTok? What's the content going to be? So you create a TikTok account, and you want to be on TikTok because you heard there's money there. You're always interested in where the money is. But then you figured out, I, I got no ideas. I got nothing. So since you got nothing, let's rely on an animal to make the money for us. Nice. Oh my God, so cute. Bravo. <laughs> nice reverse you did, right? Yeah. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> That wheezing laugh kills me. Of course, because he doesn't seem to mind as much. Oh. By the way, Chantal, I'm sure that horrible wheezing laugh is getting on that hamster's nerves. Hamsters are very, uh, how can I say this? They get nervous easily. Loud noises and all that bother them. So you might want to be a bit more quiet around Harry the hamster. Chubby McMoose. See, there you go, calling Chubby McMoose. That's what she used to call Sam. So she's using the hamster in place of Sam. <laughs> <laughs> He's so happy right now. Yeah, he really is. He McMoose. <laughs> Toy for him. So basically, this whole video has been like, oh, let's just use the hamster for content all right so we're gonna put this toy here something else to chew and play with it's too crowded in there he also has these snacks from the pet store pet zone these small animal treats these are delicious chunks of mango and papaya he gets one a day oh <laughs> we also have a huge bag of wood shavings for his cage what kind of wood is it cedar y'all saw the post we're like different shavings are not good for a hamster cage we also got some gnaw sticks these are important for his teeth health hi just a bunch of wood sticks cute don't slip again keep moving yeah 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 go hero <laughs> you're so brave <laughs> You're so encouraging. You're such a cute, you're such a good hamster dad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, darling. Oh, God. How much did she pay you to say darling, Sala? You can just cut it out with the sweeties and the honeys and the darlings. They sound so fake and phony, bro. We know you're not in love with Chantal. We know you're leaving her alone. And that's why you got the hamsters to keep her occupied while you go out and smoke shisha and hang out at the clubs and do what you want to do. Cut it out. Cut it out with the nonsense. <laughs> you know, the truth of the matter is, Sala, when she first got there, you could spend time around her, but I'm sure she's on your last half of a nerve, and that's why you agreed to get the hamsters to give her something to do for the next 30 days until her butt goes home, so she wouldn't drive you mad. Good job.
Way to go. Yay! Nice. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is so sad. All right. So that's it for the React to Her video and the community post and also Marley Hendricks video, which I'm going to leave uh, a link for in the description. And again, like I said, I encourage everyone to check out the video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this React. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you very much for watching and have a great night. Bye-bye.